There's no need to get tense. Relax, relax, condense. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. As the saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. A bunch of old cassettes like this probably looks like trash to most people, but to me, it's absolute treasure. That might surprise you if you know me, as I have a reputation for being a bit of an audiophile and appreciating high quality sound. But I'll tell you, I have discovered that these old cassettes can sound much better than I remember, and perhaps better than you remember as well. Here's a little story. Back in the 80s when I was in high school, my family had a pretty good cassette deck and a Kai, and I listened to it all the time. However, I was always disappointed in the sound of pre-recorded cassettes. I had really written them off as being marginal sound quality at best, and I tended to listen more to albums, and when I went to college and they introduced CDs, I stuck with those from then on. Recently, though, I've restored a bunch of old cassette decks and have found that I've been quite surprised with how good they can sound with a good, well-maintained deck. I found that to be especially true when I bought my first Nakamichi deck recently, a 1982 RX 505, which really does bring out the best in cassettes. However, once you start using and collecting the old cassettes, you're going to find that uh, many will have some problems. Here's just a small sample of my collection of uh, cassettes that I've acquired that all need repair. The two most common problems with cassettes I find is that the cassette will either break in half or the pressure pad will need to be replaced. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take care of both of those problems. And I've also noticed that a, that a lot of videos on YouTube discussing cassette repair don't really tell you how to deal with a pre-recorded cassette that does not have screws. And there is a way to get into these cassettes and I'll also tell you how to do that as well. Okay, here we go. I was actually listening to this tonight, this Fleetwood Mac Live uh, cassette. I just bought a bunch of um, cassettes on eBay. I got like uh, 15 of them for 10 bucks and this was included, Fleetwood Mac Live. I only have the second cassette which contains sides three and four. I don't have the first cassette. But, you know, I was enjoying listening to this thing and the sound quality was pretty good. And I got to the end of side three and snap, the tape disconnected from this hub, okay? So it's in there somewhere. And I also noticed too that there's no backing pad uh, for the cassette. With the Nakamichi decks, I was playing this on an RX 505, that actually there's a lifter which separates the, the pushes the pad away because the Nacks don't really need the pad. So it actually played well um, even without that. But if we're gonna fix this, we'll probably replace that as well so I can play it in some of my other decks. So I'm just going to work, work along the edge. Pardon me, I'm going to look through this uh, magnifier so I can see. And of course, I've got to be careful too. If I dig in with this, I don't want to um, um, score or mar the, 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 the tape inside. Work my way around the edge. Right down the line where the two pieces meet. The two halves of the cassette shall meet. This will probably be a long, slow process, so I'll probably fast forward through this. Oh, yeah, that broke through. I've got to be careful because the tape um, is loaded on this side. So let me work on this side where there's no tape loaded. Um, be less likely to damage things. Okay, yeah, it's starting to come apart. Can you see that? So the, the top part is still really very tight. It seems like the sides are the uh, easiest to pry open. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's opening up now on the top as well. You see that? Again, I need to be very careful here. I don't go too deep with the blade. 
and I don't want to damage the tape that's inside. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I would rec I'm going very slowly, but I would recommend if you're doing this to also go slowly. Just slowly work at breaking apart that seal. But some parts are definitely um, tacked together better than others. This top area here is being particularly stubborn. Oh, oh here we go. Okay, getting there. So on the bottom here, the um, the seam doesn't go straight down the middle, it's offset. As you can see, uh, this half of the cassette actually extends over past the center point. And the score line on this side is actually right here, not, not here. So we're cutting here. You can see it's starting to come apart. The This hub is coming off a little bit there, okay. So when we do get it apart, I do we have to be careful because we don't want this tape that's on the spooled on this hub to go flying and become unwound, uh, getting dirty and contaminated. So I'm gonna try, if I can, I'm gonna try to hold this down flat at this point and work my way, my way over. And trying not to damage the outer shell because I would prefer to use this, this shell because it, you know, it has the type on there. It's the original as opposed to transferring it to a like a blank shell. If I'm gonna do that, I might as well just um, <laughs> I might as well just record it from the CD or from uh, iTunes onto a blank. You know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna have that. Yeah. Let me close this up, and I think we need to continue to break this bottom seal a little bit. I think we have it. Let me see if I can. Okay, yeah, there we go. So just a quick note here on, on this tape, uh, we did need to open up the shell because our leader tape, we couldn't see it. So uh, we couldn't, uh, it wasn't exposed. It was inside. So we needed to open up the shell to expose it. Now say for example, it did break at the leader tape as it did with this cassette. But you could actually see the leader tape from here. In that case, and you also had access um, to the magnetic side, in that case, you wouldn't need to take apart the two shells. You could simply pull the two pieces out. You know, take your two pieces out and um, work on it that way. And that would be true as well if, um, if it had split somewhere in the middle of the cassette. You know, say it's a 45 minute or 30 minute cassette and it broke at minute 15. If you were able to, and you had both uh, both sides of the tape available, or if you were somehow able to uh, spool it so that the tape came out, then you wouldn't have to do this. Uh, in the great majority of cases, though, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> One side of the tape is going to be stuck inside, and there's really going to be no way that you can, even if you reverse spool this, get the tape to come through this notch. Okay, so no, you won't always have to um, cut apart um, the, the cassette shell or open it up, but in the great majority of cases you will. Okay, so just a quick note on that. Okay, before we begin, let me just show you a couple of products that we're going to be using to repair this cassette. Uh, two products that I highly recommend not only to make the job easier, but to make sure that the repair is going to be long lasting. First on this side, we have a uh, splicing kit from spliceit.com, uh, which includes a splicing block, some splicing tape, and a razor blade. Okay, in, in the video, uh, I'll show you how to use this. You can make an attempt 
to uh, to do this type of repair without a splicing block and uh, without tape by sort of holding the the, the, the tape in alignment uh, somehow and maybe even using something like scotch tape again I, I did that as a kid and you know uh, with a lot of finagling you can you may be able to get it to work but um, really to make make life simpler and to really do the job right i would recommend a kit like this on this side uh just a little kit i purchased from sleevey wonder on uh, ebay he sells these um, pre-cut foam pads that will um, we'll use to repair the uh, the pad on our cassette uh, again you might be able to get away with uh, using an old pad from another cassette that you're not using or maybe some you know from some uh, felt that you purchased from Home Depot or whatever but again just make life easy and get yourself a uh, an inexpensive little uh, kit like this with some with some pads these are all uh, have adhesive on them so they're just uh, just a matter of removing them and sticking them on place and those will attach to the pressure pad bracket um, that we removed from the cassette here and I'll show you how to do that as well okay let's set this aside for now and let's take a look again at our cassette shell. Note that on this half of the shell and this half, they're a little bit different. Okay, This part of the shell has all of the extrusions that are required to hold the uh, pressure pad bracket in place, as well as the uh, rollers Okay, and the metal posts. Now these posts can actually be removed um, so if they happen to be depending on the way they um, when you take apart the cassette where they fall they may end up on this side or that side. Um, I'm going to recommend that we look at this side of the cassette okay, and that the posts go here. Now again this side is the uh, side of the shell with all the extrusions um, for uh, for the pressure pad that's going to make our life a lot easier if we work on this side. Currently though we have the tape on this side of the cassette so what I'm going to rec recommend doing is that we actually flip it so that the tape is over here. So to do that quickly let's just put it together very quickly and um, don't even need to put our, our rollers in at this point. And you want to lay this tape down flat because what we're actually going to do is we're going to put this cassette shell back on top and we're going to flip it around. Okay. So I just wind it to make sure that when we, when we put the uh, other half on that we don't um, pinch or crimp this tape. Okay, So go ahead and take this shell, place it on top. Again, be very careful. I can see that if I'm not careful, I can really crimp that tape. So I'm watching the path. Okay, And I've got it right in that notch there. If you can see that where it's not being pinched. Okay, So be very, very careful. So now we're going to flip it over. And now the tape will be on the correct side. Okay, so let's set that aside. Okay, so again, don't work with the cassette on this side of the shell that has these uh, just these tabs here without all of the grooves um, to hold everything in place. Much better if you work on this side. Okay, and make sure that this side also is going to have the metal posts. If the posts, uh, metal posts were on this side, remove them and put them over here. And also place your wheels now on the posts on this side. Just note too that there uh, many cassettes will have an additional uh, plastic nub here in here before the wheel. Now you might looking at that you might think well that's just a support for the shell and uh, you might get stuck and wonder well does the tape path go on this side of the post or does it go on this side of the post okay and um, yes it, believe it or not it actually does go on the outside of the post so when we thread this, we're going to align our tape so it goes on this side of the post. Uh, one more thing I'm going to recommend at this point is if as we keep working, this tape is going to want to keep lifting off of this uh, spool of magnetic tape. So what I recommend doing is get a post-it note and just carefully pull your, uh, your tape together. Okay, but leave enough length so that we uh, exposed so that we were able to um, work on our splice okay so something like that now if you just place your post it over the tape like that you're going to help keep that tape from releasing off the spool and you're also the post that the adhesive on there is so light it's not going to damage that um, that tape in any way it will be very easy to lift off okay so now that's secured in place and let's expose our leader okay Great. Okay, now at this point, we're going to get our 
splicing block up, okay? And note, looking at the block, that there is a 90 degree groove, and there's a 45 degree groove, groove, and there's a uh, horizontal channel, okay? This channel is where the tape is going to uh, lay, okay? And when the tape is laid down in here and pushed down, this groove will help keep the tape in place. So when we make our cuts and we tape, the tape will be will stay uh, perfectly in position, and as opposed to trying to you know trying to do this again, if you can imagine trying to do this without this block and aligning these tapes together and using Scotch tape, doable but not something I recommend. Okay, so very important now. You don't want to work on the magnetic side of the tape. Okay, when we apply our splicing tape, okay, it needs to go to the back side of the magnetic tape. So you need to visualize how the tape runs through the cassette mechanism. Okay, if if you can picture my finger here being the tape head, okay, and the tape comes this way. So clearly this outer part is the part of the tape that has all the information, the musical information. So what we want to tape is not this side, but this back side of both of these, okay? So, take your tape out, okay? Now, the magnetic side is towards me at this point. We wanna flip it so that the magnetic side goes down, okay? And we're going to use our 45 degree block, okay? Now, I'll tell you why in a second. Let me just get this in position here. On the magnetic side of the tape, try to leave as much as possible here because we don't know where the audio starts, so you don't want to cut your audio off. But leave yourself a little bit extra so that it can, when we um, leave yourself a little bit extra, but not too much. You can pull it right about, right about there so that it's aligned right at that 45. The reason why we're going to use the 45 degree groove is that a 45 degree uh, splice on a tape is less likely to be heard as a click or a popping noise. So the 90 degree, 90 degree um, splice area is used for other purposes, but for something like this, um, we're going to use the 45 degree. Picture the side that's not going to be touching the tape head, okay? And flip it so that side is down. And now overlay that over our magnetic tape, okay? And I recommend using a Q-tip, just push that in, okay? Don't, don't leave it hanging out like, like this. Get it in that groove as, 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 as much as possible. You wanna fill up this whole channel with, with the tapes to securely hold it in position. You can see here that I can sort of slide this back and forth now. And I'm gonna get it right about there, okay? So at this point, we're going to make our cut and then we'll overlay the splicing tape to join these two together. But I want to make sure that I don't pull this in any way. Okay, once I make this cut, we don't want to move the two pieces of tape away from each other. So very, very carefully. And there we go. Now, the leader tape is over the magnetic tape. So this piece that we cut off here, we need to very carefully remove don't want that to be part of our splice. Getting it out of the way. Okay, that's the excess. Now there's also an excess piece of magnetic tape, but that's under the, under the leader, so we don't have to worry about that right now. That won't, won't affect us when we put our splice in. And you're gonna remove about uh, three quarters of an inch or so of adhesive tape. Okay. And trim off the end so you have a nice clean start. Cut about uh, three quarters of an inch, right about there. Oh, that went flying. And you can see it went over here. Okay, now take your tweezers, obviously, are, are going to be very helpful with this. Okay, and use your tweezers to hold the tape in position and you want to place it evenly over this splice, the 45 degrees. So same amount of tape 
on this side as that side and just work that in there very very precisely very carefully get it as straight as possible this needs to be aligned perfectly or it will cause troubles okay now take your q-tip push that in place now mine's a little bit off uh, I can see, I don't know if you can see it, but the tape uh, didn't go quite perfectly across. We need to examine the tape and the splice to make sure that that's going to be okay. So let's perf uh, lift it up. And at this point, try to work with your leader. Um, try to make contact with this side and not the magnetic side, okay, as that's more delicate and contains audio information. Okay, and there we go. Let's take a look at our splice. Here's our excess piece of magnetic tape. Just remove that. And let's see, how does that splice look? Well, I did an okay job, not perfect. There is a little bit of excess here. We're probably fine, but there's just a little bit of extra tape coming here. So I'm just going to just trim that off. And I'm not even sure if I removed anything. May not need to. That looks pretty good. All right, let's go with that. Uh, if we have any troubles uh, playing this cassette due to that uh, lip, um, if there is indeed a lip, <laughs> my eyesight's not the best, then we'll have to re restart this over again, okay? So at this point, take the splicing block away. We need to spool this. Now these Bic pens are famous <laughs> for being used to help spool cassettes. So if you have one of these around, uh, this is what you're gonna to wanna to use. And maybe uh, keep this, uh, keep a Bic pen aside in your tape repair kit as I do, just for this purpose. And we're going to spool the leader onto the tape. All right. And our tape path, again, over these posts. Good. Okay, now let's fix our pressure pad, okay? Here's the um, bracket for the pressure pad. Let's go to our pressure pad kit and take our tweezers. Remove a, a nice new pad. Now, the way I like to do this is I like to look at it from behind. So I'm gonna place the uh, pressure pad here with my tweezers with the adhesive side up. And I just wanna now align the bracket. So it's perfectly, the rectangle of that bracket is as perfectly centered as it can be over the foam pad. Okay, and just give that a little press. That's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, actually, I don't like that. Let's see if I can do a little better. I have lots of pads, so I might as well try to get this right. Throw that one away. Get another pad. And you can see even these uh, pads in the kit aren't all exactly the right size. Well, I pick one that looks uh, like a nice cut. This one here looks good. Not too big and relatively square. Okay, try that again. Hold your pad in position and overlay the bracket. That's pretty good. Squeeze them together. Yeah, that one looks a little better than our first attempt. Okay, yeah, looks good, nice and square. Um, this is important. You don't you don't want to just willy nilly attach the um, the pressure pad. It really needs to be even uh, on all sides. Okay. Now the way that goes, I'm going to look at our shell, and you can see there are two slots for it: one here and one there. And there's our pressure pad in position. Okay. Now we can spool that in place. And yeah, everything looks good. So now, very carefully, remove the post-it. Take your other half of the shell. Now note these uh, tabs here. These are sort of extended. Very important. When you 
attach this. Don't just drop this on top. You're likely to pinch your, your tape. Start from this bottom edge here, and as you're looking at it, make sure that those tabs are being used to push the tape into position. Okay, now drop that in place. Okay, holding it very carefully, make sure that the hubs are aligned. And we're going to do that by seeing if the mechanism goes cleanly from one hub to the other, and it does. And that also shows us that there's no pinching. Okay, so there we go. That looks great. Now at this point, we could attempt to glue this together, um, but why don't we test it first? Let's make sure that our splice is going to hold by playing it a couple times and uh, fast forwarding. Make sure that the splice isn't causing any troubles with our player mechanism. So what I recommend doing is getting some tape and just temporarily using it to hold the two shells together. I recommend a thin piece of electrical tape. Um, uh, it's very easy to remove. Uh, I'm going to start here at the bottom. One piece here and one, one piece here and one piece there. Okay. Now another on the other side. This tape isn't sticking very well. Make sure it's going to hold. It's a good idea to use a tape that's not going to leave a little residue, but at the same time, make sure that tape is actually going to stick. And it doesn't look like this is going to. Let me get some stronger electrical tape. So this tape is uh, stronger and more adhesive. However, it's a little bit wider than that other tape. Um, let's cut off a fresh piece. So. Um, we need to, um, if I try to put it here like this, it's going to be too much, so we need to cut it to size. Let's try right about there, see how that works. And hopefully this tape will hold a little bit better. One there. One there. One there. And one there. It's very important that this part of the tape be uh, taped together and secure. If this part of the shell comes apart, that's going to cause troubles with our tape path. Okay, let's also put a piece on this side. When you're taping this half of the shell, you may want to make an effort to not uh, cover up these notches. Uh, if this was covered, now the tape would, could actually be recorded over. Um, some, some tapes might also have additional holes. So different holes will tell the machine whether it's a, a chrome tape or a metal tape. My machines don't don't have that type of detector, so I'm not really worried about it. But just note that if you do cover up those holes, your your machine might temporarily not be able to recognize the um, which tape formulation is being used. Most pre-recorded cassettes, uh, though, are not going to have those because very few uh, pre-recorded cassettes use uh, chrome and certainly or certainly metal tape. All right, looks good. Looks like we can uh, take this out and use it for a while without worrying about it falling apart. Uh, this tape looks like it's going to be secure. Let's do that now. Let me go take this and put it in a cassette uh, machine and let's uh, let make sure it plays well. All right, let's give the cassette a try in our Nakamichi RX505. Turn it on. Load. All right, crossing fingers. Let's hit play. There we go. Fast forward a little bit. Yep. Working fine. Now let's rewind it a couple of times to make sure that the uh, our splice is going to hold. for a little bit. Sounds good. All right, one more time rewinding just to make sure. Got a nice, uh, nice strong spice. And looks good. Great. Fast forward one more time. Rewind. 
Great, looks good. And let's just take a quick look. Everything looks uh, looks fine. All right. So now that everything is working, um, we can go ahead and make a permanent fix. And uh, so let's glue the two halves of the shell together and um, we'll see how that works out. Okay, let's get the two halves of the shell glued together so we can um, enjoy this tape with a more permanent fix. Let's remove the old the tape we had used to hold the two pieces together and carefully lift pieces apart. The right glue for the job here is obviously going to be super glue. We have to be careful of course that we don't use excess glue that somehow gets inside and sticks up the tape path. Okay, So I would recommend doing a little bit, looking at the two pieces, a little um, super glue here and here along this top edge a little on the sides and I would avoid for the time being getting close to this area here because we don't want any excess to get in there. Um, however, you are going to need to do a little bit in, in each corner. So a little bit of super glue here and there. This side we can do a little bit more okay? because we're not close to the, uh, there's not as much tape over here. Perhaps a bit here and here where the two pieces fit together. And also, we should put a little bit here. This part will go over that. So if we cover that with a little bit of super glue, this post will come up, will cover it up. And um, so uh, we don't have to worry about excess glue um, getting in the way of the tape. All right, so let's begin. I'm going to use a little um, Gorilla, Gorilla Super Glue Gel. And yeah, it's a good idea to shake this up. Be very careful with uh, when you take this apart. Be very careful that you don't drip. Um, if you have a, a drop of super glue that falls onto this tape, you're, you kind of ruin it basically. It's as simple as that. All right, so very, very carefully. Let's put a little bit along this edge. I'm just putting little droplets down. And that's going to be more than enough in the corners. This corner, all along this edge, and on this post here. and a little bit in this notch there, here. Just making sure we have some glue in this area here because this is, uh, I guess again with a tape path, this is very critical. So I want to make sure that the uh, two halves of the shell are, are joined together very well there. Now we don't have all the time in the world to work, so let's get this together quickly. I'm going to spool this nice and tight. And again, starting this way, I'm going to make sure that the tape does not get pinched. That looks good. Looks good. Um, all right. Push the two halves together and just hold that for a little bit. A little bit of weight on there just to hold that in place for a while and create a little pressure there. Let's just give that a few minutes and then we'll take a look and um, try the cassette out again and make sure it works. All right, that should be about enough time. Let's take a look at our work. It's good. Um, we did a good job because we don't have a lot of excess uh, tape bulging out. And uh, yeah, it looks real good. Let's get our pen and make sure that uh, the tape is working correctly. Spool it out and see. There's our splice. Great. Let's go the other way. Looks good. I'm just going to go over the uh, the sides very carefully with the um, with the wipe to make sure. Let's remove some of that residue from the 
tape that we put on there and just make sure that there's no excess glue sticking out. And just clean up our work a little bit. This um, paper has a very um, light sort of solvent on it. So I want to be very careful that um, just using this to break down the, the glue and the, um, the tape residue, but I want to be very careful over the text uh, make sure that we don't um, inadvertently remove the writing on our cassette. Okay. We get a clean cloth. It doesn't have any solvent on it. And before you start uh, working with this, you know, you know, moving this cassette around and putting it in your machine, you just want to make sure that there's no sticky residue left from the super glue at all, and that you can handle it safely. Looks good. Uh, just drop it up and down a little bit. Make sure it's not falling apart. Let me see if I can pry these two sides apart. No, seems very solid. All right, looks as good as new. Let's uh, let's play it one more time just to confirm.